Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm going to walk you through a scenario where a lot of you have probably experienced where you're often given data that's kind of in a single large table format where all of your fact and dimension fields, such as the columns, would be contained in kind of one large massive table. And as we know in Power BI, or some of you may not know, we do want to aim more towards a relational database structure with separate fact and dimension tables in somewhat of a star schema design. So I will actually show you how to take a single large table and split that up into separate dimension and fact tables that you can then import. And we can do all of this in Power Query, which will make our report and our data set both faster and more optimized, and the file size will be smaller too. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So to start with, let's review the output that I want to aim towards. So we have in my final relational data model, my sales table, which is a fact table. And then I have a product dimension and a geography dimension. You'll also notice a calendar table over here. Now the calendar table is outside of the scope of this video, but I will link you to a video down in the description below, which will show you a step-by-step -step guide by me on how to make one of these. But for the focus of this, I want to focus on the geography, the product, and the sales, because the data for all three of these originally came from a single large table. So let's go ahead and see the start of this demo and see how I was able to build out these three tables from a single master table. So this was the original table that was imported. You can see that there is a lot of fact and dimension type columns contained in this large table. And in the model, we only have this one giant table in here. Now to keep things short and sweet, I will mention that this for the most part is not optimal for the tabular engine. It is designed to work with relationships and leverage those to be able to split out large and tall fact or transactional type data in a fact table with categorical or grouping objects that are in the columns that would be in a dimension table. So we want data between fact and dimensions split up. So we have information coming from here, let's assume from an Excel source, and we're gonna see how to use Power Query to transform this. So I'm gonna come up to the transform ribbon up here at the top. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our sales table. We're going to disable the load on this because this will act as a source query to build our three tables that will be a mixture of fact and dimension tables from there. So I'm going to right click, select enable load, select continue, which will disable it and delete that from the model. And I'm going to change the name now to data source. And this will go into a group called data sources, just in case you ever have more than one. There we go. And now we are going to right click reference, which will treat this as a source for the new query to reference that. And let's start by seeing the data that we can break out to this. Now, the goal of this to break out these into new tables is that the dimension tables need to be distinct on the key coming back to this. So looking for geography data, we can see that I have country and at the very end, I also have continent. So two columns here and the lowest level, which will essentially be my key column that I need to create myself will be the country column here. So we can go ahead and do choose columns uncheck everything except for country and continent, select OK. And now let's come up to the options up here and remove duplicates to deduplicate this to make it a distinct dimension table. And we can confirm country has six rows, six unique values. So this is now our geography table that will have country and continent. So let's go ahead and rename this to geography. And we're gonna do a similar thing with a product table we're gonna make. So again, I'm going to right click and I'm gonna select reference off a of data source. I'm going to rename this to product for the product dimension table. Now there's a few things that are related to product. We have brand name, class, color, continuing through, category, subcategory, product name, product description. So let's go ahead and select those, choosing columns, and I'm gonna select brand name, class, color, category, subcategory, name, description. Those are all my product attributes. Now again, we need a key that will be unique. So let's go ahead and first use this here. We're going to remove duplicates off of the entire table. What that does is that checks per row for each of these columns and keeps unique rows related to that. Now, I would think that the product name is what I want to be distinct. However, look, 413 distinct, 170 unique. So the issue with this is actually because there's a couple columns in here that are not unique to product name. So description is not unique per product name because that describes a couple of things as a lower level of detail in here. So one example is that there can be multiple colors and classes for the products and descriptions as well. So technically with these three in here, this cannot be distinct as a key. So those are gonna remain in the fact table because they can be unique per order. So I'm gonna use remove other columns. I'm going to go ahead and take class, color and description back out of this, select okay. 
We're going to come back to the remove duplicates step, and we can see that it is 880 distinct, 880 unique. It is also based off of the first thousand rows. So if this is ever greater than a thousand rows, you can select column profiling, change that to column profiling based on the entire data set, and you select that here. It will recalculate to confirm, yes, we are now completely distinct. So now we have created our product table that is the one part of a one to many relationship that we will key back to our fact table that we're also building out. And we have seen why we needed to keep certain columns on our fact table that we're building out of this. So one more time, we will now create our sales fact table, right click data source, reference, rename this to sales, and all the columns we kept on our other tables we can now remove. So coming up here, I'm going to keep country because that is the key to my geography table. Continent goes away, but I do not need subcategory, category, or brand name. The only thing I need is product name, which is the key back to that, and the description, which is not unique to product name, just like color and class, both have to stay on this table. So those are all remaining, but we have now removed a few of the columns to create more of a defined fact table. Now with these, I also like to group them as well. So I'm gonna put sales, geography, and product, all three of these into a new group called load to data model. There we go. So now I've organized these a little bit. Let's go ahead and close and apply. And now we have a geography table, product table, and our sales table. Product name will be keyed to product name on our product table. And I'll go ahead and hide this one because I want to enforce that people use the column from my product dimension table. So that's an example of a column we would hide. Get rid of that here from the report view. And then country, it's key to country. And we can see that they are creating a one-to-many relationship between these two. Same thing, I would go ahead and hide that in the report view. And now we have aimed this file from our sales fact table, our geography and product dimension tables to something that is more optimized and aiming towards a star schema, which will make the file smaller and the report faster. Now you might have also noticed that the completed product also had a calendar table outside of the scope of this video, but I do have a video that walks you through the 101 kind of introduction steps of how to make a calendar table, link it back to your data, make sure that the relationships are set up correctly and that you have complete date ranges, plus how to create what I would consider to be a better date hierarchy versus the native one that's built into Power BI. So go ahead and check that down in the description. If you wanna check out how to make a calendar table, otherwise, I wanna thank you for watching the video. If you like this video, check out some of the related videos that I have in the upper left over here. And otherwise, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you like this or wanna be able to share it with other people in the community, helps the channel grow. But otherwise, again, thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you in the next video or live stream.